Hi there and welcome to Scrap and Coffee. For our next project, um, we are going to make a folio using the Prima uh, Marketing Paper Collection Darcel. Uh, so I have the A4 paper pad. I wasn't able to get 12 by 12, um, but I thought I can get the A4 and just make an album that works with A4 paper pad. So that's what I did. And uh, well, I've got some flowers. First time I ever got flowers for the cover. So I'm curious how that's going to turn out. I have some journaling cards. I have some stickers, some chipboard stickers and some Unfera. So uh, yeah, I think we should be able to make something pretty beautiful with that. And um, in order to make the folio, I have already um, made a cover. It's a cover that measures seven inches by nine inches and it has a spine that measures one and a half inches. In the Canon Guide you can find the measurements for it. I've just wrapped everything and uh, placed some black cardstock on here. I just like to have a clean surface to work on and um, so from here on we are going to work. And I'm, uh, It's going to be a folio, at least I'm calling it a folio, however it's going to have one page. So there will be one page in the middle and then a front inside cover and a back inside cover. It will come together pretty quickly. It's not going to be too large, so it should be pretty fun. So we are going to start with making um, the page that goes in the middle. I've prepared everything. I've cut and scored and I applied tape. So we are going to start with our piece A and our piece B. Or actually, let's start with piece B. Um, yeah, let's start with piece B. So this is uh, going to be a large pocket and we have score lines on three sides and I've placed tape on the dented side and we are going to make an acetate window in this pocket. So we are going to turn the piece over towards the bumpy side. We are going to draw a frame here. Now on the three sides where I have the score lines, I'm going to draw a line one and one eighth of an inch away from the cut edge. So I'm just lining my ruler up and it's just easy to have a ruler with a grid that you can see through for these sort of things. So one and one eighth from the cut edge on the sides with a score line. And then on the one side that doesn't have a score line, I'm going to line it up with 5 eighths of an inch. So that gives us a frame of 5 eighths of an inch all around the acetate piece. So we are going to cut out the middle part. So I'm just going to place my ruler. And I'm using a utility knife. You can use a craft knife. I just prefer a utility knife for the straighter lines. And I use my craft knife for when I have to make some angles and stuff. So I'm pushing on my ruler and try not to push too hard on my blade. Last line. And then let's see if we got it out nice. Yes, we did. So this we can lay to the side. You can still use it for something else. Maybe you need to clean up the edges a little bit. So then we have a piece of acetate and we are going to place that on the bumpy side right on top of there. Now I've already placed my double sided tape on the acetate. Uh, that can be enough, but I just prefer to also place some double sided tape around the edge of the frame on the cardstock. Uh, you don't really have to do it. You can also do it only on the cardstock. And then I would use, if I would do it on one side only, I would use a wider tape than I'm using right now. Then I would use at least a quarter of an inch tape. Um, the measurements in the cutting guide for the acetate will provide for a quarter of an inch tape uh, where you don't have any tape overhang and don't go any larger than that. 
if you want to go larger on your tape you have to also make your acetate piece larger so just make sure that you stay in between the score lines with your acetate Just giving it a burnish so I can remove the tape back in. So all the tape backing is removed, and now just taking our time, making sure we have a nice edge all around, place it down and then gently I'm going to burnish over the tape. And you can see the color of the tape changing and that means you have a nice stick part. Okay, so now when we turn it back over to the dented side, we have that nice acetate frame. Now let's minor our corners with scissor. And then we can fold on the score lines. So then we can get our piece A in and piece A has two score lines and I'm going to fold on the second score line to begin with because we are going to line up our B piece with piece A folded on the second score line. And then we should be able to place this on top of here and you want to have your folded over side of the A piece on your left and the opening of the pocket on the top. And then we can place it right there. So I think I'm going to remove the tape only from the bottom, just to be safe. It's a big pocket. So I'm just lining it up here at the bottom. You can also place it where you want it and then remove your tape back in piece by piece. Or uh, remove it partially on one side and then remove it when you have it in place. Now this tape backing is not cooperating. Yeah. I'm just removing both of them now. So I'm just going to do one side first. I'm sorry if my head is in the camera but I want to see what I'm doing. It's one, and there's two. So now we have that pocket with the opening on the top so we can place our stuff in there. I'm just burnishing it a little bit. It doesn't really matter to me that it's a little bit um, open. That, that's just fine with me. Sometimes it happens when you place your pocket in the way that I just did. So now we have that um, hinge here and that's what we're going to use to attach it onto our uh, cover. So now I'm going to lay this to the side and I am going to prepare our pieces C, D, E and F. That's going to become one piece. And I haven't placed my tape on my C piece yet, as I can see. So I'm just quickly folding on my fold lines, and the piece can go. The tape can go on the dented side between this um, cut edge and the first score line. We have two score lines here. We have a little gusset, one eighth of an inch gusset there. And I fold it on the second one first because again I'm going to line up the other pieces with the C piece folded on the second score line. We have piece D, 
with one score line on the bottom we are going to taper that half inch because this piece is going over the whole length of the C piece. So I'm going to fold on it, give that a burnish. And this, I have the C piece folded over with my folding on the left. And I'm going to place the piece D on the bottom of piece C. So again, I'm just lining it up and I'm trying to not go over the folding on my left. And burnish it. Then we have our piece E. Again, now we have score line that's going on the top. We again we are going to taper that half inch. Fold towards the lumpy side. Tape is always on the dented side unless I tell you otherwise. And this is going to be right here. So it will eventually fold over the D piece. So I don't want to confuse you, but it's uh, we have piece D folding to the top, and now I'm going to place this on the top, but I'm turning it around so I can work on the bottom, and I'm able to see what I'm doing. Just like that, and give that a burnish. So now when we fold this, it will fold over, and you can use a magnet to close it, or any kind of closure that you like. So now again I have that folded over on my left and we have two F pieces. Now you can round the corners here or use any kind of punch that you like or don't use any punch of course. I'm going to use the scallop punch from the memory keepers and I'm going to use that on the top flap And I'm also going to use those on the F pieces. Now we have two pieces F, both have one score line. And uh, this piece, if you haven't figured it out yet, is going to be the de deconstructed envelope. So on the side where there isn't a score line, I'm also using this corner punch. And fold on those score lines and burnish. And then we can place this in the middle on both sides. And I'm just centering it in the middle. But I do like to place the top and the bottom piece first. So you can uh, place that on top of those half inches. But you can do it the other way around. Just as easy. It doesn't really matter. So I don't have to taper this half inch. Because I'm not going from top to bottom. And I am just eyeballing it that I'm somewhere in the middle just line it up with the edge and burnish it down and we do the same thing on the other side so I haven't decided yet on what closure I'm going to use on this piece Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm just sort of eyeballing it here. Okay, so then we fold this in and fold this in. You could also use your corner points right here. I'm not going to do it for now. Maybe I'll change my mind later on. So um, it's not going to keep itself in place for now so maybe I have a paper clip here let's see I do but always be careful when you use a paper clip that you don't damage your cardstock but I don't want it flipping and flapping all around so just use this for now and then we can get our first page in there and we need to fold on the first score line here to make that gusset 
and now we are going to place this half inch from the envelope that we just made and we're going to line it up with the edge oh <laughs> i have to do it on the right side of course um, where the binding is of our piece but we are placing it on the frame so that's why this is a 5 8 of an inch frame and not a half inch frame that's also perfect but i wanted to hide this construction so it's why it's 5 8 of an inch and i'm going to i want this to be in the middle so i am going to measure that out <coughs> let's see i think it's Yep, and then two. so there. So I just made a little tick mark on where the bottom of my piece should be. I don't have to taper anything here. You can, it's not wrong to do it, but it's not necessary. And then making sure that I fold it on the half inch score line, I'm going to line it up with the edge of the frame. So you can fold this in if you like to make sure that you place it on the right side and then with the pencil mark that I made to center it on the piece and just burnish it and then when we place our pattern paper we will hide the construction of this so that's on there now we can go to the back of this page and it comes together pretty quick actually we uh, first i'm going to place the piece g this is a larger piece and it has two score lines um, and they should be on your uh, right side and we have a score line at half an inch and at five eighths of an inch because again we are giving this a gusset and I'm tapering it from the half inch score line to the cut edge. So be careful that you taper it from the half inch score line. And then I am going to fold on that half inch. Well, actually you can fold on both of them. It doesn't really matter. But we are going to stick the half inch down. That's where our tape is on the dented side. We'll make sure that we have that gusset. Carefully burnish it. And then I'm going to place this page up against that score line here from our large piece. So we have, this is what we just made. We are turning it over. I have that fold it over score line here and I'm going to lie my half inch up against the score line here uh, yes but that's because of that cassette yep I think I'm just removing this part so so I can uh, line it up and then remove it when I have it in place. So I'm lining it up at the bottom and making sure I'm still able to see the score line. And then I'm sticking it down and remove the tape backing. And then we burnish it here. And then we need to get that one eight of an inch gusset up again and then you should not go over your uh, first page it should line up perfectly here on the left edge so this we will be opening up making sure that uh, the top is on the opening of the pocket is on the top and then we are going to place our stacked belly bands so uh, I've called these pieces H1 and H2, but they are a little bit different in size. So um, be careful with that. Uh, we are going to start with H1. We have just have to fold the score lines on two sides like a normal belly band. So let's give that a burnish. And H2 has a score line on the bottom as well. And we are going to treat it like a stack pocket. So I'm going to cut on the score line half inch from the bottom up to this score line and then I'm going to cut it at an angle 
And let's do the same thing on the other side. So here we go. That's what we cut away. Now we've only placed tape on the sides and that's also the only two score lines that we are going to fold on. We don't fold on our bottom score line. And we give it a burnish. Now we have to determine where do we want to have the belly band. Do we want to have it centered? Do we want to have it a little bit more to the bottom? Uh, I think centered is best, but uh, it's up to you. You can play around with it, of course. So it's a bit pretty difficult to keep it all in place now, but it's this is the idea. And it should fit between your cut edge and the score line. You should be able to still see the score line here, so you can fold over this page. If you don't, if you, if it doesn't fit, then you should make an uh, adjust your score line here a little bit. But I think I will place it. I always like to measure. I'm going to place it about three, two and three quarters from the bottom. And I don't really have to measure it exactly, but just make a little mark on where you want it to be. So if, let's make sure that I'm going to fit on here and I am fitting on here, still being able to see the score line. Just check, check, double check because now we can adjust it and when it's on there it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So I'm just uh, placing it, I'm starting here at the score line, making sure I'm able to see the score line. Give that a quick brush and then I am going to remove the tape backing of the other side. Carefully, you want it to be straight, guided towards the edge of the page. You don't want to pull on it too hard because then it's pretty tight fit underneath your belly band. And then the second piece, H2, should slit in there and stop at the score line and just, just like a stack pocket, fit on here and I'm just checking, checking and I'm going over a little bit here on my page. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit and maybe I can make a little score line here. You should use a scoreboard for this, by the way. Don't go free-handed like I'm doing here. But kind of helps me on folding a little bit further. And I don't want to go a complete one eighth of an inch. I just want to make sure I don't have any overhang on my page. So that also means I have to make adjust this cut a little bit here. See, it's really, really, really little piece that I've just adjusted there. And that's better. Okay, so I'm just going to remove tape backing on both sides for this piece because I'm just guided by the other piece, so that's fine. And I wanted that one eighth of an inch gusset on this side so you can really put stuff in this stack belly band. I'm just going to do it from this side. See if you have overhang, you will be able to see it a little bit, so be careful with that. So we can fold this over. Okay, so, um, so there are going to be some add-ons on the back of piece G as well, but um, it's going to be with acetate windows, so uh, it's going to take a little longer. So I think I'm going to stop the video right here. And in the second part, we are first going to work on the inside cover.
on the uh, left inside cover and then when we go to the right inside cover we can take that with us so i think it will take about three shorter videos for the constructions and then um, we also have to decorate it so uh, yeah, I want to thank you for watching for now. I hope to see you in the next one. And remember, the cutting guide is available on my website. So enjoy the rest of your day.